spring makeup releases just keep coming, friends. It is absolute lipstick mania right now. We have hot new collections coming from Tom Ford and Guerlain. Olaplex is trying to dig itself out of a hole. And YSL Beauty just randomly wiped their entire Instagram account last week. Why? Keep watching to find out. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. And welcome back to our fortnightly episode of What is New in Luxury Beauty. This is when we hang out together and talk about all of the newest, the hottest, and the most interesting new product releases and industry news in the world of luxury beauty. And I'm going to be kicking things off today, friends, with some hot new spring collections that are hitting the shelf soon, starting off with Guerlain. Take a look at this spring collection. I think this is the one that I'm the most excited for. Take a look at the packaging on this collection. It just reminds me of, I don't know, like candies or something like that. Delicious springtime candies. And the other exciting thing about this, friends, aside from the packaging, is that we are getting new meteorites. I know so many of us have been looking for new meteorites. We did get some pretty packaging for holiday 2023, if you recall. Those sold out very quickly. It does seem with this spring collection that they are going to be launching a new shade in the meteorites. And this one is called Zero one pearly white. So it is going to be more so for fairer skin tones. It looks like it's going to be a mixture of kind of like white and pinky, maybe slightly peachy toned pearls. Looks very, very fair. Maybe even, I don't know, a little bit too fair for me. Comment down below and let me know what you think. But what I do appreciate, friends, is that in addition to this shade being available in this beautiful packaging, it does look like Guerlain is going to be offering this new limited edition packaging in the other three shades, 02, 03, and 04. So I'm very excited for that. I'm definitely going to be picking these up. Maybe a multiple shade. I don't know. Maybe multiple shades because it looks like maybe some of the deeper ones here in this collection could be more of like a glowy blush or like a blushy bronzer. I don't know. Let me know if you are familiar with those other shades of the meteorites. We are also getting in this collection a new eyeshadow palette. Let me know what you guys think of this because I feel like so many of us are very much tired of pink. We've seen this before probably a little bit less excited for this, but I don't know. I'm kind of excited for the white shade. I feel like that's going to add a lot of really beautiful freshness. I have a feeling that these promo photos don't really do the palette justice. I'm hoping that that white shade is going to have like a beautiful iridescence that we're seeing from a lot of the other brands like Chanel and Dior in their spring collections. I am definitely going to be getting the palette. I'm definitely going to be reviewing this collection. I also think that I will probably get the adorable little brush that comes with the meteorites because once again, I'm kind of a sucker for this packaging. It just looks like a delicious little candy. I just... I can't resist guys. And I like the little pink tips that they have at the top of the brush. And then finally in this collection, guys, there's also going to be a new Kiss Kiss Bee Glow in a new fresh pink shade. That one I'll probably skip. But overall, guys, I'm excited for this collection from Guerlain. I think it looks really beautiful. And I think that the quality is going to be there. I think the only question I have in my mind is whether or not the eyeshadow shades are going to be interesting. So I will let you know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you can see reviews of many of the products that I talk about in these episodes. And also do not forget to follow me on Instagram because that is usually where I let you guys know first when all of these collections drop. But comment down below, friends, what do you think about this new collection? I do kind of wish that maybe they came out with one new shade in the meteorites that was, you know, for folks with a deeper complexion. I think that is like my only super hard critique of this, but I would love to know your thoughts. By the way, if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I help you shop for luxury. I am so so passionate about luxury beauty. So I talk about it a lot here on my channel. I do a lot of luxury beauty, new makeup reviews, fun and helpful guides in addition to this series regularly. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fam because we would love to have you. And as a quick reminder, friends, all the products that I'm talking about in this video, if they are available, when I see them become available, they all will be linked in the description box down below. I do use affiliate links. So when you shop through my links, you usually earn a commission, which goes towards supporting my channel. Thank you so, so much. And with that, let's get back to the rest of this episode. Let's talk about Tom Ford next because we have sneak peeks of their Soleil collection. I'm always really excited for this one because you guys know I love the summertime vibes. So this is what the collection is looking like. There's a couple of different items here. The star of the collection usually is the eyeshadow palette. So here we have the eyeshadow palette in Emerald Dusk. It doesn't say here what the formula is going to be. It just says eye color quad. I really hope that this is the wet dry formula, guys, because 
I know that this isn't like a groundbreaking color story, but I do think that this looks really beautiful. The promo photos for Tom Ford palettes are always so, so bad. So who knows what we're going to get, you know, when we actually see real photos of this collection. But I'm actually pretty excited for this palette. I love that it's sort of a mix of neutrals with that beautiful pop of emerald green, something that you could wear every day, but then you can kind of put on the green for a little pizzazz, maybe a little bit of like a liner situation. I have a feeling that this palette is going to do very well, specifically because the Revage palette from Chanel has been so, so popular this past season. I know it's sold out, guys. I keep checking to see if it comes back in stock and it hasn't yet. But if you didn't get Revage, I'm curious to see if this is going to be a good alternative. Granted, it's not blue, but it's still kind of like that similar concept of like summertime neutrals with a pop of color, okay? But we're getting emerald instead of the blue. Comment down below. Let me know if you're excited for this eye quad. We also have a new highlighter from Tom Ford and it just says golden here. I don't know if this is going to have like a fancier name. This just kind of looks like what they've released over the past one or two years or even in past collections. These highlighters from Tom Ford, I will say they do have a very nice formula. I very much enjoy the one that I purchased last year as a part of the Soleil collection, but <laughs> these highlighters are usually like 90 to a hundred dollars. So is it worth it? I don't know. That's kind of up for you guys to decide. I probably won't be buying the highlighter just to be honest with you guys, but let me know. Let me know in the comments if you really want me to review that. I just find that if you have one of these highlighters from Tom Ford, if you have a tone that you really enjoy, you don't really need to get a new one. You can kind of just stick with what you have. So I'm a little bit less excited for that. We also have this very aesthetically pleasing spark lip oil. Ooh, this is tempting. You know that this is incredibly overpriced. They came out with a lip oil last year or was it? Yeah, sometime last year they had like the rose collection. I think it was. I'll put an image up here and that lip oil sold very well. However, I did hear a lot of people say that they didn't think it was worth it. I heard a lot of people say they thought it was like eh, just all right. And I have no doubt that this lip oil will be like, you know, 50, $60. So my recommendation guys is wait for the review use on the lip oil. Don't just run out and buy it because it could be just as, you know, not worth it as the lip oil from the other collection. We also, however, have four other lippies in these beautiful summertime colors. Ile de Amour, Plage Nu, Rose Irise, and Peche Paradis. Hopefully I didn't completely butcher those names. These look really beautiful. I actually could be tempted to purchase one of these, but I really think the thing to get from this collection or the thing to have your eye out for guys is the eyeshadow palette. I think it is so, so beautiful. And it definitely seems like a lot of people in the comments agree. Next, we have a lot of new products that are launching from NARS. You know, when summer is approaching, we are just gonna be blasted with with all things Laguna from Nards, and they have a ton of products that are going to be dropping. The first thing is this Laguna palette. It says it's a face palette. I think it is a mixture of four eyeshadows at the top, two bronzers, and then a highlighter. It's a little bit hard to tell across the promos I'm seeing on social media whether or not this is one palette, or I think it's two palettes, one that has lighter toned bronzers and another that has deeper toned bronzers. This is gonna be a skip for me, guys. You know, I already already have my NARS bronzers. I rather just get the Laguna talc free bronzing powder in the single. I use them all the time. They're some of my favorite bronzers. I really don't need more of them in a face palette, but I do think that, you know, this stuff is going to sell well at Sephora for kind of like the average consumer. Also, what is interesting is that NARS is going to be launching eyeshadow sticks. I'm kind of curious to try these out. 2023 was the year of the eyeshadow sticks with all the brands. Okay. I feel like we all remember that. So, better late than never, NARS. I'm curious to see how these compare up against, you know, like the Laura Mercier and the Victoria Beckham, for example. So this might be something that I would try out. Comment down below and let me know, you know, <laughs> what you're interested in me reviewing here on this channel. They also are going to be coming out with a new eyeshadow quad. Surprise, surprise. It's like soft, rosy tone neutrals. There is a limited edition blush and they also have limited edition summertime packaging for their powder and their cushion foundation. So I don't know, guys 
NARS. Are you tired of NARS? I really liked their last eyeshadow palette that they launched for holiday. I did review that for you guys and I thought the quality was very good. So, so I don't know. NARS is a little bit of a guilty pleasure for me because the products do really work, but I just don't think they are all that exciting and worth picking up if you have a lot of makeup already in your collection. Comment down below and let me know what you think. As I mentioned in the intro of this video, friends, it is absolute lipstick madness right now. All of the brands are launching new lipsticks for spring. And I wanted to show you guys the first ones here. These are from Chanel. These are the Rouge Allure Velvet Nuit Blanche. And I didn't realize that these are actually limited edition. It is a limited edition collection of kind of like their classic Rouge Allure Velvet formula. But I think what's supposed to be different about these is that the color is supposed to be a little bit more like luminous and blurring. I did pick up two of these lipsticks guys I have been testing them out I'm gonna be doing like a new lipstick roundup video very very soon I just have to finish testing out some of these products so make sure you are subscribed to my channel I will share my thoughts in that video but I just wanted to let you guys know that I did pick these up these are new from Chanel they are available now it looks like the lightest shade is sold out at the moment but maybe in your country it is still available these are $50 guys they're very very expensive so I would recommend watching some reviews first just to see if you really really like the colors and to just kind of make sure that the formula is going to be right for you and if you were wondering what was on my lips today this is another one of the new lipstick releases and this is from Westman Atelier these are the Westman Atelier lip suede matte lipsticks I picked up three from this collection they have a lot of really beautiful bright summertime shades I would have liked maybe some more nudes in this collection but nonetheless I did pick up three that I'm going to be reviewing for you guys and the color that I I'm wearing today is called Pip. I will list all the shades and everything in the description box. This is described as a hydrating matte lipstick with a dreamy airy feel and vivid clean pigment for lips that feel as good as they look. Westman Atelier, they consider themselves a clean brand. I will be taking a look at the ingredients of these lipsticks, guys, when I do the roundup just to see, you know, what's the preservative situation? What is the shelf life of all of these lipsticks here? These are also very, very expensive. They are 50 dollars each so once again i highly recommend that you check out reviews i know a lot of people have already purchased these so if you want to leave your little mini review for us make sure you pop that in the comment section down below because i would love to hear your thoughts we also have some new lipsticks and lipstick cases being released from dior this spring this is going to be in the refillable shine formula if you haven't tried it before it's really beautiful it's kind of like a shiny balm but it has decent pigmentation more than like the lip glow for example and this is going to be in five new shades. Three of the shades, Rose Bonaire, Dolce Vita, and Nude Mitza are going to be permanent. And then there's two limited edition ones, which are Dior Lilac and Desir. They keep coming out with so many of these guys. And I do like these lipsticks, but I think that they launched with like 40 shades or something like that. It's getting kind of difficult to decide which shade to buy. It's getting kind of difficult to figure out like what are the cult favorites. I don't know. I get very overwhelmed. I don't don't feel like we need so many more shades of these lipsticks. I would love to hear your opinion, however. I kind of wish they just came out with like one or two limited edition ones to kind of like spice things up season to season. There's just so many shades right now. I don't know. I can't believe I'm complaining about there being a lot of options, but I don't know. It's getting to be a bit much. I feel like it's a little bit overwhelming. They also have right here the new cases for spring, and they are in these like beautiful, ballerina pink tones. We have the monogram embossed one, and then we have another one that's kind of like that coated canvas fabric-like type of material. I think if these, you know, if this was when these first launched, I would be so, so tempted by these cases, but I already have a pink one, guys. And I remember when they did the red ones, the red case was like something ridiculous, like $60, even like too much for me to be convinced to pick it up. So these are probably going to be a skip for me. Not that exciting but I did want to let you guys know they have these really cute new pink cases and some new shades. The most interesting lipstick launch, however, or I should say relaunch, is the rebranding of the YSL Rouge Volupte Shine lipsticks. And let me back up for a second, friends, because I love the YSL Rouge Volupte Shine lipsticks. They are some of my favorites. I even like them more than the Dior Refillable Shine lipsticks. I know, absolutely love them, and I have my go-to shades. So I feel kind of concerned and very invested in this rebrand. I'm curious to know why they're doing this. They are going to be rebranding these lipsticks to the YSL Love Shine 
lipsticks. The packaging is gonna be different. Instead of the gold, it's now gonna be silver, just like the candy glaze ones, which by the way, those are now gonna be called the YSL Love Shine Candy Glaze. The whole line is now gonna be Love Shine, and they also are changing the formula. It says right here, the Renewed Love Shine lipstick uses a new fruit oil formula of passion fruit and fig juice extract, creating a juicy lipstick that melts the moment it touches your lips. It will also contain about twice as much soft wax as conventional products while providing a lightweight feel. So they're changing the formula, guys. I don't know why, because they were good before. If you have any information about this, let me know. I kind of feel like they're just doing this to sort of revive the line. It seems like they had these lipsticks before a lot of other brands launched theirs. New things came out. People kind of forgot about them. And now they feel like they need to do a rebrand. It's a little bit annoying because I have my go-to shades, but I'll show you guys here some swatches that I found on Instagram. And it does look like there's a lot of really nice shades. It also looks like there's a lot more like nude tones, which I think is good. I'm very interested in trying these out. I'm definitely gonna be doing a comparison here on my channel. And later on in this video, guys, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about YSL Beauty, kind of like their rebranding, or maybe not rebranding, but their new spokesperson, their new ambassador. So make sure you keep on watching until we get to that. I feel like we're good on the new lipstick releases for now, friends. Let's move on to eyeshadow releases. And Victoria Beckham Beauty is launching new shades for spring of her eyeshadow sticks. You guys know I love the eyeshadow sticks from Victoria Beckham. I do have a review of all of the original shades and I have been patiently waiting for new ones to pop up. So for spring here, we have Cornflower, a matte sky blue. We have Ballet, a shimmery warm pink. And we also have Shroom, a shimmery storm gray. These retail for $34 each. And I already purchased all three friends. So I'll do some sort of review. We'll swatch them. We'll try them on. I already know that I like the formula, but I'm curious to see how these colors look. I predict that Shroom is probably going to be a new favorite of mine. I predict that that's probably going to be the one that sells out the most. It is such a beautiful, like cool toned earthy color, but I like the other two, the pink and the blue as kind of like some fun pops of color for spring. I know a lot of you guys already ordered these, but if you're interested, if you're trying to figure out what color to get, I will do some sort of review soon. We also have a new eyeshadow release from Makeup by Mario. He is coming out with the new eyeshadow palette. This is the Master Mattes eyeshadow palette, the neutrals. And it looks like this is a more neutral to cool tone version of the first Master Mattes eyeshadow palette, which correct me if I'm wrong, friends, he launched his brand with that, right? So it's kind of been a while. I have heard really good things about the formula, but all of that being said, I'm still like a little bit confused about this release. I get that it's an extension of something that he already sells, but I would have expected him to release maybe like another version of the ethereal palette, for example. So many people liked that palette. I kind of feel like he's just taking the mattes from that palette, which I didn't really like, and then just putting those colors into this and trying to kind of like ride that neutral to cool tone wave. I don't know, guys. I would have liked to have seen something a little bit more, I don't know, artistic and different. I get that this is very like makeup artisty, so it's sort of artistic in that regard, but we've seen his palettes do so well if he mixes the mattes and the shimmers together in a really beautiful, natural, neutral, you know, Mario type of way. I don't know. I would have liked to have seen something that was more of a comprehensive palette. So I understand the extension of the line, but I don't know. I'm curious to see if he does another palette similar to Ethereal because for Holiday, he basically, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, he basically just restocked the Ethereal palette, which annoyed a lot of people who kind of really went out of their way, sometimes, you know, paying double or triple the price on eBay to get that palette. He didn't launch anything new for Holiday. He just relaunched that palette. And then now we basically just have like the all matte version of that. So for me, this is is like, you know, really a pass. It's kind of boring. If you are an all matte person, or maybe you want more of like that makeup artist vibe, check it out. But honestly, guys, my recommendation would be go with the Viseart palettes. And similarly, friends, Danessa Myricks is also coming out with another palette, basically doing the same thing that Mario did. She is launching a new version of the Groundwork palette. So last year, Danessa Myricks came out with the Groundwork palette, kind of like new interesting formulas in an array of neutrals. You can use them all over the 
face. She's basically launching that, but in like a pink and rosy toned version. Comment down below and let me know what you think of this. I guess I'm not surprised that she's coming out with another version of this, but I'm curious to see if people feel like this is going to be worth the price tag and if they feel like they're going to get as much use out of this as they did the Groundwork palette. Because the original Groundwork palette, at least because it was like more browns and traditional neutrals, you could use those all over the face. People use it as like concealer and on the eyes and as bronzer and on the lips, liner, you name it. You can do so many things with that palette. I've seen people do reviews. It's a really cool product. But with this, I feel like you can only use it really as like blush and eyeshadow and I guess lipstick. But yeah, I guess you can't really sort of sculpt with it. You can't conceal. I suppose you could do liner. I don't know. You're just not really going to get as much bang for your buck. So I'm curious to see how this performs. But hey, these colors like the pinks and the roses and the mauves, we all know they sell very, very well. So I kind of like the way that Danessa Myrick, she's taking something that's like very commercial, which is those rosy colors, but she's combining it with her more like unique kind of innovative formulas. And yeah, I feel like she does that pretty well with her brand in general. So comment down below. Let me know what you think. Is this a palette you would be interested in? I would love to hear your thoughts. That is all I have today, friends, in terms of the product roundup and new releases. Now we're going to get into a little bit of beauty and industry news. I have a couple of interesting topics that I want to share with you guys today. Things that are going on in the world of luxury beauty. The first one, maybe a little bit less interesting, maybe kind of more predictable. I do want to share with you guys the upcoming dates for the Sephora sale. I know it is the sale that we all love to love and also love to hate, right? We only get like 15 or 20% off. But that being said, guys, a discount is a discount. And a lot of the products that I'm talking about today are probably going to be in included in this sale. So mark your calendars, guys. Start budgeting. Start making your list so we don't overspend. The sale is going to start for Rouge on the 5th of April. So we have like, meh, like about a month, okay? I'm giving you a heads up. It's going to start on the 5th of April and then it's going to go through the 15th. So it's about like 10 days, two weeks long. And then for VIB, it's going to open up on the 9th of April. I'll put all the dates up here so you can see. And then actually for Insider as well, it is going to be opened up on the 9th of April. So if you are Rouge, you do get a little bit of like a heads up. You get a little bit of like a jump start there. If you're trying to grab like a Dyson Airwrap or something that sells out very, very quickly every time there is a sale, you know, maybe there'll be a new Patrick Ta palette or something out that launches like the day that the sale opens. You can snag that before before it sells out. So I just wanted to share with you guys those dates. The code that you can use is going to be yay save. So I'll just put that in the description box down below as well. You can save that. And yeah, comment down below. I always want to know from you guys, what kind of content do you want to prepare for the Sephora sale? I usually do recommendations videos. I have a whole playlist of other recommendations videos for Sephora as well. If you want to start kind of, you know, just having some fun and figuring out what you want to pick up. So definitely let me know what kind of videos you want and I will make sure that I plan for those. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about some more interesting news in the world of luxury beauty, starting off with YSL Beauty. What is happening to this brand, guys? If you missed it last week, they wiped all of the content off of their Instagram account, which left many of us wondering what's going on. Is there a rebrand? Are they discontinuing things? Are they reformulating things? What is happening to YSL Beauty? It seemed like it was going to be this big announcement only to find out that basically it was a PR stunt to announce that Dua Lipa is the new brand ambassador, the new beauty ambassador for YSL Beauty. And I say that in air quotes, guys, because we've seen Dua Lipa as the face of the YSL Libre perfume. Very popular. I own it. I love it. We've seen her as the face of that for like a couple of years now. Like I've seen her face on YSL Beauty billboards in multiple different countries. So it seemed a little bit, I don't know, it seemed a little bit lackluster. It's like not really a rebrand, not really a new face. I'm not saying that she's not a good match for the brand, but it really was nothing new. And kind of going back to the product roundup earlier in this video, she is heavily, heavily promoting those new 
Love Shine lipsticks. It really does seem like they're trying to make a splash with these. And by the way, she is not the only brand ambassador for YSL. I think it was last year they announced Lil Nas X as another brand ambassador. And I wanna say that he was heavily promoting the Candy Glaze products, which I'm pretty sure that those have kind of popped off in popularity recently. Comment down below. I'm not on TikTok, guys, okay? So sometimes I don't know what's popular on TikTok. I only know what's popular on like Instagram and YouTube. I'm old, okay? But it seems like they've seen a lot of success with these celebrity endorsements. And in fact, in a press release, they said about this whole stunt, YSL Beauty is exploring new ways to drive authority on social media by creating native content and disruptive, disruptive ways to connect with the young while igniting virality and stunts. And I thought that this was a very interesting quote because it really makes me think about how much these brands brands nowadays in such a saturated luxury market, not just even luxury market, just like the beauty market in general, how much they rely on these kind of big flashy social media stunts. And I guess that these celebrities that connect, you know, a lot with that younger audience, which it seems like that's who YSL is trying to go after, because usually when like Gen Z is talking about a lot of stuff, it goes viral, it goes viral on TikTok, okay? It seems like these celebrity endorsements are working for them. We've also seen a lot of brands leverage AI and create a lot of like cool, flashy AI advertisements and videos. They're really trying to kind of chase after stunts, more or less, stuff that kind of really gets the attention of this younger audience. And in fact, we've also kind of seen this evolve into the product development of the products. A lot of products that we see nowadays, sometimes there's like something novel about the product that doesn't really affect the way that it performs, but it gets your attention. The one that comes to mind, like the most recent one, I forget the name of the product, guys, but it's those milk makeup blush sticks. The ones that look like a push pop, okay? They look like candy and they're very eye-catching. They're very aesthetic. They're like jelly. They're very interesting. And I think that's why we're also seeing a lot of like fancy packaging, fancy embossings, color changing things, interesting textures, whether it be jelly, mousse, etc. A lot of these brands, they are just fighting to get get our attention and they really only need one viral product, one viral product to really drive basically like their entire sales for the year. YSL is a luxury brand, but when you think about it, a little, you know, candy glaze lipstick or a, what's it called? The Love Shine lipsticks. If they really want it, maybe they have a job and they save up their money. It is something that they will go out to Sephora and seek out and purchase if they see enough people talking about it. We're even seeing like 11 year olds at Sephora now going after drunk elephant, which is like a completely different topic to talk about. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to comment on this. I thought that it was a very, very lame PR stunt, but apparently this is working out pretty well for YSL Beauty. I'm curious to see what else they have up their sleeve. And I would love to hear from you guys what you think of these stunts. Does it affect you at all? What do you think of these viral products? Comment down below and let's start a little discussion. Now let's talk about Olaplex, okay? Because Olaplex Olaplex is struggling, but they're trying to make a comeback in 2024. Last year, the brand suffered from a net sales decrease of almost 35%. 35%, guys, that is absolutely bonkers in one year. So what is happening to Olaplex, okay? This was a brand that was the gold standard, at least from my perspective, in luxury hair care. This is what people shelled out money for because there really was nothing else out on the market at the time. And a lot of people found that it really, really worked, okay? So what's happening with this brand? Why are their sales declining? Well, number one, they did suffer from a lawsuit last year. They had a couple of people that claimed that the product products caused hair loss. There's no research to really support this. Of course, they have denied it. I don't think that that case has really gone anywhere, but it really doesn't matter, guys. It has damaged the perception of the brand. The second thing is just the growing number of Olaplex competitors. Basically, other people have made formulations. They figured it out. They've come out with cheaper solutions, basically dupes to Olaplex. And Olaplex was such a 
beloved product that I think a lot of people were very much eager to figure out how can I get the Olaplex effect, but for cheaper, okay? Because Olaplex is really expensive. I can definitely attest to that. And then right here, just kind of reading a quote from their team, it says, I believe the headwinds were the result of the business growing too quickly, suffering from execution errors, and not appropriately investing in the resources needed to best support the professional stylist community. And I thought that that was interesting because, you know, Olaplex, I would consider them to be a luxury brand. They have very high price product. And here it seems like, you know, obviously there's going to be competitors that pop up, but in order to sort of remain highly regarded, you need to have the right strategy there because there's always going to be the customer, you know, like me, where I know I can get drugstore dupes, okay, but I don't buy them because I like luxury beauty. I like the packaging. I like the formulas. I like the experience. And let's be real, guys. Okay, I like the brand name. Like I'm in it for the fantasy. I want to feel like I'm getting the best of the best. And Olaplex really didn't, like they kind of just grew too quickly and they really didn't have the right strategy to kind of keep their brand in that highly regarded category. And it sounds like a big mistake that they made is that they didn't invest in the stylist community in sort of the professional hairdresser, colorist community of people that are promoting their products. Because when I go get my hair cut and colored, I listen to what the professionals say. What are the things that they're using? I'm seeing these products used in the salon and I associate that product with a luxury experience, with a professional hairstylist experience. So all of this being said, guys, they are trying to make a major turnaround in 2024. And it looks like a lot of that strategy is going to be on the professional stylist channel and investment in elevating brand equity and use of data to drive decisions. So guys, I'll be paying attention to see what Olaplex does, but I thought this was really interesting. I was so shocked to see their decrease in net sales. And I wanted to just kind of start a conversation with you guys. What do you think about Olaplex? What do you think about their sort of like fall from grace? Would you buy them again? Do you think that they can pick themselves back up? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. When was the last time that you shopped at Macy's for luxury beauty? Comment down below. I'll wait. Okay. I'll wait. Let me know. Do you equate Macy's with luxury beauty? I got to be honest with you guys. I really don't shop at Macy's anymore. That was my go-to. Okay. When I was in high school, because I was on that Clinique train. But ever since then, guys, I feel like Macy's is that retailer that just kind of like pops out of the cobwebs every holiday season and tells me that they are my fragrance destination and I'm like, really Macy's? Really? Okay. But maybe this is all about to change because Macy's is trying to focus more on the luxury beauty shopper and they're making some big changes to their stores. First off, they're going to be closing 150 of their lower performing stores, and they're going to be investing a lot more into training with their employees, getting more employees into the stores, basically trying to double down on a better kind of like guided shopping experience for luxury beauty shoppers. Because I don't know about you guys, when I go to like a Saks Fifth Avenue or a Neiman's or something like that, I want help. Okay. I want to sit down in my chair. I want someone to come and like test and color match the foundations on my cheek. I want them to show me things. Okay. I don't want them to be pushy, but I like to be helped. I don't want to have to like rifle through the drawers, you know, for the things that I want. I want excellent service. So Macy's is going to be reinvesting a lot of that into the service that you see in the stores. I'm interested to see how all of that pans out, but that isn't it friends. They also are going to be opening up more blue mercury stores, which is kind of that more like high-end beauty specific retailer. I didn't know that they were owned by Macy's personally. Now I do. And they also are going to be focusing on opening up more Bloomingdale stores, specifically the smaller ones that you see in kind of like strip malls. They're kind of going away from like the big enclosed malls because a lot of Americans are just not shopping at those big malls anymore. They have a smaller format called Bloomies that is more of like a condensed version of a Bloomingdale's, I guess. And they're going to be focusing on opening up those as well. And it says right here from the chief executive, 
executive of Macy's that they seek to reposition the company's overall image so consumers see it as a higher end destination. He says, I think that we need to do a better job in our content and in our presentation and in our marketing so that the customer sees and is inspired by what we are selling. So I thought this was very interesting. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Is your image of Macy's maybe completely tarnished if that's just like not really a place that you shop? I'm really excited to see that Macy's wants to improve their service, wants to improve maybe their selection and their perception with the customer. So I'll keep a lookout friends to see if I see any updates on this story, but it really does seem like Macy's is trying to focus a little bit more on the luxury beauty shopper. And as a luxury beauty shopper, I am definitely here for that. So let me know what you guys think. And lastly, friends, I wanted to share an interesting collab with you all. Now this is gonna be kind of like a product release, but also industry news because there is some strategy behind it. And that is the collaboration with Estee Lauder and the Indian dressmaker, I'm gonna try to pronounce this okay, Sabi Asachi. Mukherjee. Hopefully I said that okay. I'm sorry guys, but apparently she is a very well-known Indian dressmaker and designer. And I did not know who she was, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, okay? But I have seen these lipsticks all over my Instagram feed and they look absolutely stunning. Reading here from the Business of Fashion, it says this collection, which has been three years in the making, very long, features 10 red, brown, pink, and peach lipsticks designed to complement darker skin tones. The lipsticks are encased in a 24 karat gold plated tubes. They are adorned with the Bengal tiger and they are designed by her jewelry arm, the jewelry arm of the company, which I think is so, so cool. Additionally, each shade is scented with warm cinnamon notes. And I checked the price. Each lipstick is $74. Well, they are pretty expensive, okay? But it does really seem like a cool collector's item. This really seems thoughtful, like true luxury. It took three years to design these and I really like the fact that they tailored the shades to sort of like those warmer, deeper complexions that you typically see in that part of the world. I love deeper lipsticks and warm lipsticks, by the way. So I'm definitely gonna be checking these out. Let me know if you picked any of them up. But I thought that this was kind of like an interesting piece of industry news because the strategy here is that the Estee Lauder companies, they're trying to kind of have more of a presence in the Indian market. It does look like they opened up a new investment arm in 2022 called New Incubation Venture. Ventures, launched by Beauty and You, a program designed to spotlight and nurture the next generation of Indian beauty founders. So I'm curious, you know, maybe they kind of, this is what they're doing. They're like partnering with very popular brands or popular lines, popular influential people in India, and they're kind of helping to incubate a product line. So the question is, are we going to be seeing more from this designer? Are we going to be seeing more interesting collaborations like this? I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. And that is it, my friends. That is all of the luxury beauty news that I have for you this week. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to see more episodes like this every single two weeks. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. It really, really helps me out. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.